Before we get started, want to learn more about Power BI for Finance or Universal Design? Visit prague.org slash greg40 and you'll save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription. And you're going to get access to over 100 courses. Now, on to the video. What's up everybody, Greg Treziak here at Pragmatic Works, bringing you another edition in our series, Map Magic. In this episode, we're gonna explore the top four hidden secrets inside of the Azure Map visualization. I gotta tell you, these four features are a game changer. They really make your map stand out. And there's some really cool things that you may not have thought about, but you can do in your Azure Map visualizations Let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and smash that like button if you're liking this series. I wanna keep going with this. I love talking about geographic data because it's so pertinent in our worldwide society, right? So first things first, I'm gonna take our map magic file from the previous video. I'm gonna turn this from a map visualization, just a generic one. Do be aware that is eventually gonna get deprecated, so Keep that in mind, and we're gonna move right on over to an Azure map visualization. So all I'm looking at, if you're not familiar with this data set, is total bank failures for the last 23 or so years in the United States, and I have it done by state. Now to show some of the things that I wanna see today and get, give you a chance to look at, I'm gonna move instead of state from this failed banks table, I'm actually gonna move that out and I'm gonna put in city state. Why we use city state, if you've been a part of this series, you'd know that city and state together is a lot more specific than state or city individually. When you have those things individually, what you end up with is you have some repeats, right? You could have a Georgia in the United States and you could have it somewhere else, right? Um, so that's something to keep in mind with your visualizations. All right, so, top four things that you can do with Azure Maps that I absolutely love. First of all, let's go ahead and with our visual selected, we're gonna click on the format your visual over in the visualizations pane. I'm gonna move over to that one here. And what I can see is some of the generic features, that's all there, but hey, today is all about those four hidden features that are really, really awesome. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and take on map settings, open that up, and we're gonna move all the way down to controls. And in controls here, if I open that up, we've got some cool things like word wrap, style picker, navigation, selection, all those different things. And what I wanna do is actually turn on this selection pane. This is the one I wanna to highlight today. There's some cool ones in there. When you open up that selection pane, you turn that on, in the top right corner here, what you're gonna get is a little selection tool, and we're gonna move over to range selection. Range selection is our first hidden tip of this video. It is really awesome. So if you click on range selection, which kind of has that timer feature, if I click on that, all I need to do is move this map pin, and then I can search within that pin. Now the cool thing about it is I can search by either time or I can search by distance. So this is pretty interesting. So if I wanna know, hey, where can I go within two hours of the area? Let's outline it. And I'm gonna just search right here. Let's look where we've got. So here's my map pin. I've got it right over in, let's look if I've got it actually selected. Let's go back here. I'm gonna actually see that pin pop through and let me move it somewhere. Let's see. I'm gonna grab that pin and I'm gonna move it right on over to, let's go with, Let's go with Chicago, Illinois. How about that? I'm gonna move that over around Chicago. And there we go. Well, oh, almost, let's move that out of the way. That pop-ups get in my way. All right, perfect. I'm gonna put it right there, and I'm gonna say within 120 minutes, I'm gonna search, and boom, more than likely, and hey, populated areas, that whole corridor right there, lots of traffic, Right, it's 120 minutes and I could up this, I could change it. The cool thing is if I make it in a more rural area, I may potentially go further. Additionally, if I've got more access to highways, I'm gonna see that as well. And it also is varied by, I can change it by distance itself or time. I really think the time feature is cool because it's pretty practical. 
it's pretty much based on, hey, how long is it gonna take me in a car more than likely? And if you know anything about Chicago traffic, uh, you might get there, you might not. It's kind of, uh, kind of hit or miss, you know? <laughs> it depends on the day in a lot of ways. So, hey, that is tip number one. Speaking of traffic, let's jump right into tip number two. So tip number two, I'm gonna just move this out of the way for right now. And I'm gonna scroll down in my visualizations pane to the traffic layer. This is a really cool feature. So if I turn traffic layer on, I can then zoom in and get a pretty much live feed of the traffic. And to tell you the truth, I have cross-referenced this. I didn't believe it at first. I cross-referenced it with other traffic searching tools and it was pr pretty accurate. Sometimes if I'm just in the middle of my report and I'm, you know, it's getting towards five o'clock and I'm like, ah, do I need to go home? Let me check the traffic first. I'll just look at it really quickly on my report. So, hey, let's check on that Chicago traffic. Maybe, maybe not. And, well, what do you know? And here's the cool feature. I can go right into here and I can click on these bubbles and it can tell me, hey, I've got some stationary traffic. It's around nine minutes. If I go through here, it's queues, it's three minutes, not so bad. And if I've got a little jam, maybe it's slow, I can see that as well. That's pretty amazing. And here's why I like that feature, especially if you're dealing with logistical information. You're wondering, why is a shipment taking so long to get a particular area? Cross-reference the routes that you have with the traffic layer. Maybe there is some more traffic that is appearing that you did not recognize in your predictions. Maybe there's some construction going on. That can be accounted for, and I absolutely love that feature. So definitely tip two for you is that traffic layer. Just cool dimension to add and make your maps way more realistic. And you know what? I find that users pop in these maps, they look at the traffic layer, and they're like, yep, I know exactly that road. There's always traffic on that road. Well, that's pretty interesting to see. And maybe that affects your data in some way that you just previously did not visualize. So bring traffic into your Azure Maps as well. One other quick and easy tip before we get to something that is absolutely outstanding, our final tip. Our third tip here is gonna be 3D columns. I'm gonna turn off the traffic layer just so we can go back to the start here. And I'm gonna turn on the 3D column layer now to tell you the truth, when it comes to 3D visualizations, eh, I get a little skeptical. I think they can be a little bit distracting, but in some cases, this is a really cool feature. And you know what? If I look at some of the data here, I'm gonna zoom in and I can see the 3D elements pop up. Now in this case here, a lot of those cities maybe just have one or two failed banks, but the areas that have quite a few more are really starting to populate here. I've got Atlanta pop up, I've got Chicago pop up. Actually, you know what, just to show this, I'm gonna take city state out for a second, put state back in so we can group everything together and see this 3D column a bit better. There we go. So now we're looking at it more so by state and I've got those bars hanging out, just giving me an added amount of variety to my reports. Super cool to see. All right, let's get back to city state where we were previously. And we'll end with our final tip, which is going to be reference layers. Now reference layers require an extra step, but they're pretty awesome once you get it created. A lot of what we're talking about here in Map Magic is a part of our advanced Power BI bootcamp that we're offering here at Pragmatic Works. I, yours truly, am hosting that currently, so definitely check it out. We go really in-depth into mapping and even how to make your own custom maps. Kind of similar to what we're doing here, but even more in-depth. So let me show you how we can put a reference layer on top of this visualization. I'm gonna turn our 3D column layer off for now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate down to reference layer. Reference layer here requires me to upload a GeoJSON file. This is a particular type of file that uh, works well with these Power BI visualizations so we can overlay on top of our Azure map. I've got one selected here, and you know what? Microsoft has some great resources out there for you to grab sample GeoJSON. You can make your own. You can find plenty out there available as well. 
Everybody's data is different. What your needs are are going to be different. What I've got for us is a census tract for the state of Colorado. And I'm going to place this. I'm going to browse real quickly and find that file. I'm going to go ahead. Should have it here just in my desktop. One of the tips I'll show you is it's going to go for that JSON file. We're looking particularly for a GeoJSON. It is different. This took me a while to figure out. I was sitting there like, I can't find this file. Isn't it JSON? Is it the same thing? No. I want to change this to all files and then boom, right there up towards the top on my desktop. I got lots of cool stuff going on, but I've got census tracts in Colorado 2016. I'm going to open this up and now overlay that onto my Azure map visualization. Let's zoom in and take a peek at this. This is super, super cool. I can see the census data overlaid, those specific census areas overlaid onto the map. The larger ones are typically more rural. That's why they're larger. The smaller ones are more populated areas. And sure enough, when it comes to Colorado, I'm looking at these failed banks. The majority of them are located in highly populated areas along the Colorado River. And look at that. You can see Denver's got a few. Boulder's got a little bit here. And we can just track that all the way up to Fort Collins and so forth. Pretty awesome to be able to do that and just have that awesome overlay here. It does work very well and smooth. If this is taking a lot of power, we can customize how specific those lines are. Tons of great features uh, available. Definitely, hey, if you're loving this map stuff, check out our advanced bootcamp and our on-demand learning where we go really in depth into even more of this. But for now, this has been Map Magic with Greg here at Pragmatic Works. Those are our top four must-use items in Azure Maps to really change your geographic data. All right, y'all. Thanks again. Make sure to hit that like button, stay subscribed, and be pragmatic.